Hey folks, so welcome back to the channel. Or welcome if you haven't been before. I'm Watto, that's Kim, and we're wandering about. Today, we're in the beautiful Cotswolds, and we're gonna take you on a town trail of Tetbury. Let's see what we can see. So today we are going to do a town trail. We're gonna walk around the perimeter of the town first, and then we're gonna dive in and have a look at some of the interesting places. And there are plenty that Tetbury has to offer. It's the second largest town in the Cotswolds, once a very important town in the Middle Ages for the wool trade, which obviously the whole Cotswolds area is famous for. Today, it's more famous for its boutique shops, places to eat and drink, and of course, the royals. There's King Charles III and Camilla, Queen Consort, live just up the road in Highgrove House, which is very close to Tetbury. Leading to what is now a car park, these are the chipping steps. Chipping coming from an old English word meaning market. This was an old entrance to the town which is lined by cottages, um, probably weavers' cottages, I should imagine. The town itself lies on the site of an ancient hill fort where an Anglo-Saxon monastery was founded as early as 681 AD. This impressive building behind me is actually now the Priory Nursing Home but it's built on the site of a medieval manor house and dates from around 1766. Well, I don't know whether you can see, but back in the days when they built these walls, I don't think they had any spirit levels. Hmm. Like I said, we're following the route of a town trail today on an all trails app. If any of you've got it, it's a good app. Um, we're going to deviate from it a little bit because we want to take in some more of the more interesting spots. But I will show you the route that we're more or less taking on the screen so you can uh, follow along if you want to. This building here is the old courthouse, but it is now Tetbury Police Museum. Well, this is Dolphins Hall and it houses the bowls club, the football club and the cricket club. It's called Dolphins Hall because it's a reference to the town's crest which we'll learn a bit more about later on. This is St Saviour's Church, built and consecrated in 1848 as a little church for the poor. The main parish church didn't have enough pew seats, so that's why this church got built as a second church. The small congregation of this church, plus the high maintenance, led to the church being declared redundant in 1973. Now under the care of the Church's Conservation Trust, which look after 326 redundant churches in England. This little area behind me here, it's called the Nap, and it's got a lovely example of an old water pump and an old post box. That was.
was the old school. At this point, we carried on down the hill towards the ford. I wanted to catch a ford going through the ford, but we had to make do with a BMW. Trail takes us up the other side of this hill. So we're gonna get a hike on and we'll see you at the top. It's always an effort chasing Kim up a hill. Come back! Tepri has its fair share of famous residents past and present, including Brian Trebshaw, the first British test pilot of Concord, Jet Black drummer and founder member of The Stranglers, Alice Hargreaves. The inspiration behind Alice in Wonderland. But behind me here is a lane next to the old toll house, which gives you a bit of a clue. This used to be the main lane or road leading into the town before that bridge there was built in 1775. The hilltop where the church is sat now, according to a charter of 681 AD, was occupied by Tetter's Saxon Monastery. Over the bridge, it was a short and scenic walk towards St. Mary's Church. This is St Mary's Church with its impressive spire that you can see from all directions as you enter the town. The nave dates from the late 1770s and is believed to have replaced a medieval church that once stood here. The tower and the spire itself were rebuilt about a hundred years later. And of course, there's always a devil's door, which we like to call a kim door. The interior is a great example of the perpendicular style and is well worth a look around. It also houses a heritage centre with plenty of information about the town and its history. There's lots of lovely stained glass windows and uh, interesting artifacts. And yes, there is an impressive organ. Well, if you can just about see there on the gates, two dolphins, another reference to the town's crest. But why the dolphins when we're so far from the sea? We'll find out in a bit. Despite being an important centre for the wool trade, Tetbury has never actually made cloth, as it doesn't have a continuous running water source to service mills that would be needed for the manufacturing process. The Grade 1 listed market house in the centre of Tetbury was built in 1655 by the Tetbury Fifis, or Fefis, which is an old English word meaning a kind of trustee, and is still owned by them today. The market house has had many uses, including administration of the town, sales or stapling of wool, and under the entrance steps, storage for the hand fire pump, and was even used as a lockup until the police station was built. The market hall is still used today for craft fairs, exhibitions, sales, and private functions, with markets taking place underneath every week. In 1817, the Fifis gave over a thousand pounds to restore the building which was a lot of money back then, and they took off the upper story. 
Around the perimeter, you will see several dolphins featured and is one of the best surviving pillared market houses in the whole of England. So why all the dolphins? Well, the most common tale is that a member of the De Brose family who came from Tetbury had his life saved in the Irish Sea by two dolphins and when he came back to the town, it became part of the town's crest. Right, come on then, let's go and have a look up the main street and we'll see all the different types of architecture there is and some of these rather nice boutique shops. The Fifis were a group of local residents formed in 1633 and bought interests from local landowners took responsibility for the town. With so many boutique style shops in Tetbury, this one is probably the most famous of them all, the Highgrove shop, set up by King Charles III himself. Let's have a quick look around. Have you found anything interesting, Kim? Uh, not quite sure what that book's about. Ah, there's always the booze. Time to take a look up and down the main street. The centre has lots of different styles of buildings, many of which were built by the wool merchants, which were called staplers. Known as an architectural gem, many of the wool merchants' houses look the same as they did years ago. This house is called the Porch House. It's Grade 1 listed. We couldn't walk past here without trying one of these delicious burgers made by possibly the happiest butcher in the county. Oh, it's a video, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because right. action, oh, ac action shots. Right, okay. Work away, sir. <laughs> the singing butcher. <laughs> As you can see, lots and lots of boutique shops in Tetbury, really, really worth a wander around. Very expensive if you want to be buying anything, especially in the Highgrove shop though, hey. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, our steak burger was beautiful it from was. Jesse Smith the Butcher, big shout out to him, good stuff. If you've liked the video, don't forget, give it a big thumbs up at this point. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What you really need to do is watch either this film here or this playlist. We'll see you over there. Let's go. Okay, let's go.